Oh my god, that is. Oh, that's recording. <laughs> I didn't realize that's recording. Please don't post that. <laughs> that's actually an accident. I didn't realize uh, I didn't record. Stitch up. <laughs> it's stuck. I reckon you've pressed it's the is there a volume button. Well, it's very exciting to see Ireland in the Super 12 stages, and I'm very lucky to be joined by Mark Adair, the impeccably groomed Mark Adair, always. Uh, thanks for having a chat, Mark. Look, first of all, um, congratulations on making the Super 12s. Can you give us an idea, and I hope this isn't gonna be this, they always do it, I swear. They wait until you start, no matter where you are in the world, and then they, they come and do this, but he's going now. Um, what did it mean to you to make the Super 12s? Yeah, I think it meant a lot to everyone. I think um, judging by you know, judging by the messes and stuff from back home, I think it, it meant a lot to a lot of people. And I think the group itself have been through a lot the last sort of 12 months. Um, you know, a disappointing World Cup last year. And uh, yeah, I think it was for us to then almost right last year's wrongs. I think it, it, it meant quite a lot, but to do it with a, with a really good performance against West Indies was really, really better. Yeah. Well, I guess there was so much made of the, I guess, the golden generation, the previous generation that that kind of worked hard to get Ireland test status. And a lot of that was based on some white ball stuff as well and how well Ireland had gone. And then uh, there seemed to be a bit of a time when some of the white ball performances maybe were dropped off and people were sort of saying, oh, they put so much into getting test status that it's, it's hurt that. So can you, do you talk much about a team about what, what white ball success also means for Ireland? Well, we haven't played a test match since 2019, I think it was. So, um, yeah, like obviously white ball cricket is our, is our main form. Um, both T20 and 50 over. I think we've got a more balanced 50 over side. And, you know, T20 cricket we've, we've sort of had to catch up with. Um, but, yeah, like the golden generation, as, as they're called, is it was something that we always be thankful for. They've been doing a lot of hard work. Um, you know, guys going to World Cups and having to take time off work and all that sort of stuff to allow us to, to do it for our jobs and do it, do it full time. Um, yeah, like it, it means the world to them, I'm sure. And you know, having them back home, having messages from them back home, obviously, obviously, so does them, does them proud. And then, then I guess, do, do you feel it? Then you've you've got something to build on. You build on what they've they've achieved in the past. Yeah, I think building on building on something that they've achieved is great. But at the same time, it's it's about how each player comes in and makes their own mark. I think you know, you've got guys like Harry Tector coming in, Josh Little coming in, who. Who, they're 22 years old, but um, and they remember they were being brought. They were proper kids whenever we were there watching guys in the World Cup beforehand, and you know for them to come in and have such an immediate impact at such a, such a young age, I think it's it's really exciting to see, and it's exciting to see where they'll go in the next few years. And um, you know it's it's great to, you know to talk about how the guys before you have have laid such a great platform, but it's it's now about how you carry that platform forward and. and and make that even higher and make the benchmark even higher for the next generation to come through. Oh, well, what about you? I mean, how did you end up playing cricket? Because it wasn't necessarily going to be your sport, was it? Um, no, I think, um, you know, playing cricket from a young age, I think I started, started playing cricket when I was nine. Um, back in 2005, watching 2005 Ashes in the back garden with the, old, with the, old, uh, the older brother. Um, you know, we used to go down and watch dad play and, you know, following that around and again, just sort of, being being around it as, as a child and being around it as a um, sort of as an adolescent, then so that you develop a little bit faster and then developing a love for it as well came at the same time. Yeah, but what about rugby? Because you you did have a chance, I believe, and your brother has played rugby as well, right? Yeah, um, brother's best rugby player for a few years. Um, yeah, was in school would have been a decent rugby player, um, but yeah, it got it would have been a little something, I think. But um, again. Don't know how far that would have gone. Don't think I'm, don't think I'm made for the rugby anymore. Couldn't imagine having a 120 kilo uh, back <laughs> rower coming at me. Uh, how that would make me feel anymore. So yeah, I think I made the right decision to stay here. What was it about cricket that pushed you over the line? Um, oh, good question. I think like, I love sports in general. I love any sports. Um, love a bit of golf, but love anything we can really get our hands on. And I think that thing with cricket was probably that I was better at cricket than, than people sort of around me at my age, so you, you have that confidence from just from being good at it and being, and being better than other, other people and sort of you then challenge yourself to then get into different environments where, you, where you're not better than other people and you then have to catch up or you have to try and, try and improve and I think 
having having my experience over in England when I was when I was young, I think it really helped me develop a lot faster and um, obviously learned a lot of life lessons. Yeah, of course, because you play for Warwickshire, and we have discovered that we have because I live near Edgebaston. We are, you lived not that far from where I was, and we had the same favourite pub, great pub for a Sunday roast, right? Yeah. The Plough. Big up the Plough. <laughs> didn't, didn't spend a lot of time in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, probably spent too much time in there, and that's why I no longer play for Warwickshire. <laughs> so um, yeah, fair play. Okay, let's move right along from that one then. Um, that looked there he is. I thought he was stopping, but it, he has come around for another. Obviously, you've had a disappointing first up loss in the Super 12 stage. Two big games here at the MCG against England and Afghanistan. Uh, what are your thoughts on being here at the G? Yeah, we've had a warm-up game here, and it's sort of the first time I was here, and it's my first time in Australia in general. So, first time I rocked up here, I didn't really expect it to be as big as it is. Like, yeah, it's hashtag sort of, MCG so big. Yeah, it's, it is enormous, but um, yeah, I really enjoyed playing here in the warm-up game, and you know, it would be good to have a few, few people in and, and uh, experience a bit of an atmosphere. I don't think it'll quite be uh, in the University of Pakistan, but um, yeah, it'll certainly have something to offer, I'm sure. Oh, well, I'm sure that there are a lot of uh, local Irish fans out there ready to come out and support, surely, and a lot of England fans as well. I'm, I'm neutral, obviously, I have a British passport, but my last name's Farrell, so, you know. It's fair enough. Uh, yeah. What do you do there? And and uh, one thing that I think is incredibly important to ask, and probably my biggest hard hitting question, is how much grooming goes into uh, into your mustache? Uh, next to none. Um, it is incredibly seedy, shady. Um, my other half hates it, and um, yeah, apart from that, I love it. So it's fine. Oh, well, works. Yeah. I, I think it has the makings of a cult. Oh, I really hope not. <laughs> But then again, November's coming up, so yeah. I might, so you can go into that. Yeah, we, we, we might keep it for that and see how we go. Thoughts on the on that England side? Yeah, they're obviously a great side, and I think you know you watch them against um, against who they play on Ash? Afghanistan. Who you Afghanistan. play on Friday? Yes, sorry, um, against Afghanistan, they were sort of hit, hit the straps of the ball pretty quick, and um, yeah, and then we were pretty pretty good with the bat, so they've always got a lot of exciting talent, there's always exciting guys and um, it's up to us to sort of try and throw a bit of a punch back and, and see what we can offer. There's a lot of talk about throwing first punches in this uh, World Cup so far, it's sort of a bit of a rugby feel as well, so something that I'm sure you're quite comfortable with <laughs> as well. Um, Mark, thank you so much, I really appreciate no, it for and all the best for both of those games, I hope you, hope you go well, go out there and throw that first punch.